we've talked about this before often, and when you begin to think of what matter is, it's dense energy. It's all energy. It's all light. Everything is light. Did you know that? We're learning this now. God said it from the beginning of time, but now science is saying it, and we're believing it. Um, everything is light and vibration and frequency. So matter is what we would call matter is dense energy, but it's still energy. The children are released. Yeah, most of them are gone. Um, so we, this isn't what I'm fully talking about, but you guys remember this picture. In the Greek, the word spirit is the same word as spiral. Um, so let's just say, and let me say this, I'm very, very aware that we, when you open your mouth, any of us, and try to explain something that we're limited to where we are right now and we're limited to our language. Everything, every revelation is caught on the inside of you. So what you're hearing could be something different than what is being said, but it's revelation that's happening on the inside of you. So you listen from a deeper space. So the word spirit is also the word spiral. So let's just say that God wanted to create of himself, in himself, a, um, a, a people, okay? And this was his pleasure. The word Eden means pleasure. So let's just say that this is heaven or spirit or pure energy, scientifically terms, right? And out of spirit, he birthed dense energy, which is matter, dense energy, matter, that's what it is. Earth, um, spirit, heaven. I don't know why I spelled heaven like that. Breath literally became form. And then he took of the substance of earth, aura, era, and of the substance of heaven, and he placed and he put that within, he created mankind. His goal was likeness. An image to be of him. And so the, the source of mankind was to be sourced from the tree of life. Are you all staying with me? We're recapping. Okay. Even though man also had the will to choose, which was knowledge. Man began to get sourced, allowed their life to be sourced from more of a dense energy. So it would be the difference in if I was standing in a huge pool of water and it was blue clear. I could see my toes. Picture that. You can just see your toes. You can see the hair on your legs floating. I don't have hair on my legs that will float. Some of you ladies may. I don't know. I don't know you. And then it gets, that's, it would be like energy, fluid. You can see through it. It's fluid. And then there's muddy water. It's a little more dense. Maybe like quicksand. You can still move around. You can wiggle your toes. But you can't see through it. You can't manipulate through it anymore. But it's of the same substance. It's just getting more dense. It's more dense energy, okay? And then you're just concreted in. There's no hair flowing anywhere. No toes moving. It's feeling pretty rough. So think of it in light of that. It's all spirit. It's all, Allah actually means, it's the word that we said for God, okay, in Aramaic. And it's the absolute one. There's only one being. We've been trained and we've been taught. And we have a lot of stuff from Platoism and a lot of make-believe stuff that we layered on top of the gospel as if there were two things, but there's, only, there's not dualism. Even in light, when it says God is light, God, we have learned, is not matter or is not particle. It is or wave. It's both. And it's, they begin to start explaining this beyond what I even understand, right? It's all light. It's all in God. And so when I'm seeing that, that sand art, I'm seeing our lives change forms. We're learning that we're co-creators. We know we created some pretty awesome stuff. We drive downtown Houston. We created as a people, collective people, some pretty rank things. You know, we created as collectively people living out of dense energy, 
We created cancer, and then we created an answer for it, and we made a lot of money in that answer, and it becomes a system. We created, you know, death. We created darkness. Like, we created all of these things. So the first man, Adam, Adam means mankind. It really wasn't like a person. It means mankind. The first man was a living soul. The last man, Adam, which we were all in, we were all in mankind, the Christ man, was a living soul, yes, and a life-giving spirit. So the first man, Adam, was made in the likeness, I mean, in the image. An image, that's the same word used as an idol. Later, Paul said, we know an idol's nothing. It doesn't even have breath. There's no life in the idol. So the, let's say that the first man, Adam, once he began to eat from knowledge, from the carnal knowledge, um, he became more of the reflector of light, the receiver and the reflector. Where the last man, Adam, which is us, we were in mankind, we become the source in union with the source, which is the likeness, the likeness. So it's the image and the likeness. If you will, you could see, like, not that God's outside of us, but just a visual for us, that we are intertwined with God through the breath. It says that we are one spirit with him. That word spirit is a Greek word. Everywhere else in Hebrew and in um, Aramaic, it's breath or wind. So you begin to see, let's say, like, just like a wave particle... I mean, excuse me, a wave, radio wave, is communication. Lights have wave, okay, going out. You can begin to even picture yourself. Can you throw that picture up of that light beam that we keep doing? Um, we're beginning to see and awaken to that God is in us and through us and all around us, and we're communicating with him on a, a, not just a, on a spiritual level. We're using that word spirit. He'll throw that up there. So, in Christ, we became, became the light of the world, the giver of light. All right, so there it is. So that is a man, and that is you. You're just gorgeous. And that is the light that's within you, the wavelengths that was within you, the energy of God that was, is God within you. It's just a visual and God is within you and around you and surrounding you and communicating through every cell of your body. Even um, science will tell you that an atom is you know, 99.99% unseen energy. It's all energy and dense energy, which is matter. Some of us are more dense than others, right? Um, but as we begin to meditate on this, you, you can Google this picture if you want. I, I look at it often because we've been trained in the Christian church to pray to a God that's afar off, which is why we, we, because we refuse to shift or when we refuse to shift, then we don't see what's already done. And so it is already finished. You are already perfected, but the manifestation comes in the realization that it's finished. The realization comes in the letting go of the, of the matter. Play on words. So when your life changes like the sand was changing, and it's a different picture, it's still the same sand in different form. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just working with our minds right now. Can you show me the, the picture of the Lamborghini? <laughs> Let's see if I wrote that down. I did some of this where I was going to do it at the end. But um, the Lamborghini, I, I don't know how to say the, the other name. It means bull. But that, this is a Lamborghini. Well, this dude, don't show the second picture yet. This dude, um, I don't know why. They didn't really say why in the article, but he put a, it had a different license plate on there. It was like from a Ford. And he got pulled over, got in trouble for something. It was impounded for three years. He was caught up in court until Taiwan decided to do what they wanted to do with it, which is the next picture. So that is the exact same car. We're going to talk about glory today. The word glory means value, and it's what you place your value on, your weight on it. I woke up, I've been seeing, I've been just dreaming with God, I've been allowing God to expand me for the, a retreat center, and I woke up this morning and I saw it just balled up like, a, like I'm from Oklahoma, I know what buildings look like that have no mass, like just completely just, um, and I saw this retreat center in a ball, and it was like, it's nothing. 
It's just matter. Now, can you go back to the other car, the first one? This car, um, I believe it's around 300000 That's the value that mankind put on it. Okay, now let's go back to the, the next slide. So how much do you want to pay for this one? Because it's the same matter. But our minds put a heavier price on it. So then, this is why I know that we still think that God's afar off. Then we think it's outside of our reach. But it's the same matter. It's within us. It's all within us. So let's look at, the, at more Oklahoma. I, I, I messaged my nephew. We lived in um, Oklahoma. We actually just moved. Like a couple weeks after this happened in Moore, Oklahoma, we moved to Yukon, which is right down the road. And these tornadoes hit, and these are beautiful homes. People live in them. Families live, live in them, celebrate Christmas. It's a, there's a value placed on these homes. But the physical homes, are, it's just matter. Let's look at the next picture. After the tornado hit, you'll remember this, Jesse. You guys were living in Oklahoma City. It was phenomenal, you guys. It was like you were looking at a war scene. You would drive by and everything's completely flattened. I messaged my nephew because he lived in one of these neighborhoods. And he, I mean, it's so, you just get so emotional when you hear his story because his kids are in daycare or at a little Catholic school in the middle of this. He's in Oklahoma City at work and they won't let him get on the road and drive until it's done. And so he's praying, just crying, praying. He started to get in his car and go, and then they wouldn't let him go because there's tornadoes everywhere. And so he gets to the school, and they had, their kids were safe. They had brought him to a cellar or something. Here's all these little kids, you guys. And, my, my, and then he, he, I believe he grabs his kids, and then he's going to his house. And I said, I asked him, I said, wasn't your dog still alive just like sitting on the front porch? Yep. And his house wasn't completely collapsed. A lot of the houses in that neighborhood were. They had to completely gut it and redo it. But here's his, he goes, oh, G Gus, a Labrador retriever, you know. He gets his kids, and he's emotional. He, they're like, his, some of his friends from college remember where Randall lives, and they're meeting him there, and he has no idea. And when he tells the story, you just cry because he's jumping over things. He's running through the neighborhoods, first to get to his kids, and then to find your house. Like, where, how do you even know what street to turn on? We're talking about the same space that we once put such great value on that's changed, right? So anyway, and he says he, he pulls up, and he's running, you know, the rest of the way to his house or whatever, and there's Gus sitting on his front porch. Can you imagine this dog's like, what in the hell? <laughs> and, uh, let's look at the next picture. There it is. Josie volunteered. She was with, um, I forgot, you volunteered? I forgot the name of the company that she was with. Um, but these people go all over the world and they clean up disasters. And it was so humbling for people from different parts of the world that came into Oklahoma City and for months, huh? Fed people and cleaned things up. And I think there's one more picture with both pictures together. So that was the above of one neighborhood. So I'm just thinking of this as I woke up and I saw this building like if it was completely manipulated into that, and then I, and I didn't, in my mind, I didn't think it was worth as much. I'd be like, oh yeah, I can have that just like that. But if it's in place, and it's like a place is a value like of, you know, $300,000 on a car, I already think it's outside of my reach. It just already shows me that the, my mindset is far from when Jesus said, hey, go get me a donkey. It'll be a young colt that's never been written. The Lord, just tell him. Well, what do we do? We tell him. We're getting ready to rip off this man's car, basically, because they didn't have cars. And they said, oh, well, just tell him the Lord has need of it. So here I am as I'm thinking about what matter and energy is and how we're here as co-creators just like that sand to manipulate it and change it. That's what we're here to do. That's all Jesus did when he spit in the ground and he healed their eyes. He was just, we are life-giving spirits within us, in us has the power to manipulate matter. And it's not just that. I think it's exactly right what... Um, Brad said earlier, because if I, I, I was talking to someone on the phone, uh, and, I, and I said, I'm not, even, I'm not one of these people that are just about manifesting either. I mean, I'm not trying to be rude, but when, you when you're, the love of your life leaves the earth, what am I going to do? What, what do I want to manifest now? 
and, and like be all happy about it. You just really get an understanding. I'm not saying I'm all sad, but you really get an understanding that we're here for a short period of time. Yeah, yeah let's manifest, but this neighborhood could be this. What you just manifested could look like this. Yeah. It's, it's fleeting. It's going to change forms. I'm not saying there's no value on it. I believe the maturity is in the manifestation. Yeah. But it's also like Paul said. He's like, I've been shipwrecked and I've, I've, been, I've eaten with, in, with kings. You know what I mean? I've, I've been crushed and I've been rejected and I've been received and I've been praised and it's all the same. Because that's what we are. We're matter manipulators. <laughs> Alex, manipulator. Alex used to get in trouble when she was little three years old. That's manipulation. And she'd say, nipulator. Like, you know, don't do it. But now you can. You get to manipulate matter and change it. And then when you're done, you can dust it off and do something else. Man, don't be thinking like, what's the final thing I want to do in, in the sense of when it's fleeting anyway. You know what I mean? Out of your identity as a life-giving spirit, we create and we recreate and we recreate just like that sand it recreates. Um, I was looking at, let's see if I can say this correctly. What, what is, I was asked, Ramsey, what's the most expensive car? I think it's a Ferrari Daytona something. 3.9 million. I, didn't, I couldn't find a smashed one on the internet. I guess there's not that many. I'm like, should I just put a little Toyota up there and like try to convince them? But I didn't want to operate in deception. 3.9 million. And you could say, oh, that's ridiculous. But guess what money is? Guess what mammon is? It's all just matter. Yeah. It's all just from this earth. It's going to stay on the earth. It's not good or bad. It all comes down to the intention in the heart of man and what we're using anything for. So let's look at Acts 17, 24. You guys have... Heard, I'm going to read the very first part. It's a little bit of a little Aramaic twist in it, and then we'll go into the NIV, and it's um, Acts 17, 25. When we go to the NIV. For Allah, which is the absolute one, the only God, the, the, he's, it's not a he or she, it's spirit, it's breath, it's everywhere, who made the world and all which is in it, and he, the Mara de Shemaya, the Lord of heavens, and of the earth, he does not dwell in temples that are made by hands, and neither is he served from the hands of the sons of men. And concerning him, not a thing is needed. We need to hear that, Western Christian church. He is not served from the hands of men, and concerning him, not a thing is needed on account that he has given unto every man life and a soul. Verse 26. And from one blood he made the whole world, the sons of men, so that they could be dwelling upon the face of this earth. And he has distinguished the seasons by his command. It goes in and it talks about how he, things that he created and manipulated. Verse 28. And in him we are living and we are moving and we exist. In which also wise men from you have said, from him is our lineage. Let's look at it in the NIV, Acts 17, 22, or 25, excuse me. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Like, chill out. He's like, why don't you chill out? He doesn't need you to do anything for him. He doesn't need you to try to be any more righteous for him. <laughs> Verse 26, from one man he made everyone, we're all of the same substance, we're all of him, that they should inhabit the whole earth, and he marked out their appointed time in history and the boundaries in their lands. God did this so that we would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he's not far from any of us. He's between the lines. He's in the letting go. He's not in just the dense matter. He's in it. He's in it, but you've got to see past it. Verse 27, God did this so they could seek him and perhaps reach out and find him. He's not far away. Verse 28, for in him we live and move and have our very being. And some of our own poets have said we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image that's made by human design and skill. I'm telling you, we've, we've cut out an image of God in our mind, and it's in the release of that image that we will know him. You can tell, you'll feel the difference in your body. You will feel the difference in your body when you begin to let matters go, when you begin to let the image go. 
And do not be afraid because the God in you, that light, that breath that's within you will, will not, not lead you astray. It's exactly why you're here. Yeah. It's our mind that begins to operate in, in levels of deception because you can't see through dense matter. And the carnal mind, is, it, it takes energy. It, it, it only perceives what it sees with the eyes and feels with the hands and smells with the nose. But we all know that there's light beyond all of that. So I've been th just thinking, I love the word glory. The word glory um, means weight, heaviness. Like when you put weight on something, honor, value, splendor. So according to the vehicle that you saw, though, it, it's the, the glory of that vehicle is according to the value you place on it. In, in Greek, it's doxa. It's, it's more of an opinion that you place value on something. So even whenever he was saying, don't glory in an image, it's not like he's mad. I mean, the, we taught it like he was mad. He's so mad at you that you carved an image out and you put glory on it. You put weight on it. No, he's just letting you know you're missing the mark. You're missing the mark. There's, there's a revelation coming. It's like you're connected to the hose of revelation, the, the spirit that's coming in and through you and this, this understanding of who he is. So when he's saying, don't worship graven images. He's not mad at us. Like we always were taught that, okay? He's just saying there's no breath in it. Yeah. Connect to the breath. Yeah. Connect to the breath. Connect to the breath. You can't go wrong. It's releasing the mind and the understanding and the images that you've drawn of what life is supposed to look like. He said that Jesus didn't come into the world to judge the world, to decide what's good and evil, to, to set it in place. He came into the world that the world would know him in wholeness, sozo, be saved, salvation. He came into the world to move us into a holy space of knowing him. In Jeremiah 10, uh, let's see, Isaiah 42, 8, we're going to talk about glory. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or praise to idols. If you will, throw up Isaiah 42, 88. I am the Lord, that is my name. You guys remember what name is in Aramaic? Shem. Shem. So it's not saying in Jesus' name. That doesn't, it's not your stamp to get the prayer right. The word Shem is vibration. The essence of who I am. The frequency. Oh, wow, I'm preaching on the front row. That's okay. At least it's not football, Omar. Omar and Yami are out of town. If you're listening to something on your phone, it better be me. I'm just kidding. Okay, so the word sh name is essence, atmosphere, v being, vibration. So in my name, when you pray in my name, it's in my frequency. It's from pure energy. It's a revelation to pray in the name. It's talking about that. It's nothing about saying the name Jesus. In fact, I heard another person, someone sent me, thank you, um, Norman, from California. She sent me a, a guy speaking, and he said, Joshua is the same name as Jesus. Because so, I would want to make shirts that say, in Joshua's name, amen, just to flare some people up, whatever. Because we get so technical of, over what, the matter. Did you know a word is a graven image? It's matter. It's not the, it's not the letter. It's, it's the breath behind the letter. Right. Someone can say, I love you, and what they mean to do is, I'm going to choke you out and kill you and stalk you. It's not the name, it's not the word, it's not the, what they're saying. It's the substance of that person, the essence that's being released. So, I am the Lord, that is my shim. I will not yield my glory, kabod is the word glory in Hebrew, my property, my weight, my splendor to another or praise to a, a graven image that has no breath. Jeremiah ten fourteen. I like this one. He's kind of rude, but everyone is senseless and without knowledge. Every goldsmith is shamed in his idols. And we preached it and we condemned people, right? But listen, I'm, I'm looking at me here. The word senseless is dull-hearted, that you're burnt up, you've wasted your life, okay? And you're ignorant, you're unaware. Everyone is burning their life up. They're just wasting their time and they're unaware. They're ignorant. That's what he's saying. Every goldsmith is shamed by his idols. That word shamed is dried up. Are you living a life that's dried up? Are you serving a God that's far away and it's dried up? 
It literally means to be shamed. It's, it's um, to wither away or to become pale. Have you ever been so embarrassed that your blood, the blood comes out of your face? You kind of turn pale, okay? That's when you know it's not the God that has life. It's a graven image that you're serving, and you may call it Jehovah, but it's, it's shaming you. The images he makes are fraud. That word fraud is deception, falsehood, deception, illusions. The God, remember Darren used to say, I am an atheist to that God. He would talk about a God that we have all served at one point, served and bowed down, and we, it was an image in our mind. Jeremiah is saying that that is a fraud. They have no breath in them. The word breath is ruach. It's the spirit, the life of God. Literally, we can be saying we're a Christian and serving God and have no life in it. And it's no different than a carved image. It's this image. We're we're much more um, intelligent and we call things, you know, we may not be like put an idol down and worship it, but it's an image in our mind that we have formed. It's an opinion that I'm holding of who God is that's keeping me from seeing who God is. Are you all out there? Psalms 97.1, he goes on, he says that all worshipers who serve images are put to shame. That word to serve, it's to enslave, to execute. The word to shame is become dry and pale in face. An, uh, an idol is insufficient, worthless, of no value. Yes, you could have all the right verbiage and it be just an idol. <laughs> okay, so in Moses 33, 18, it says, please, when he said, remember this, he said, show me your glory. He's talking to God and he's like, show me your glory. Okay, and God says, my glory is my name and my goodness, my shim, my frequency, my vibration, my very essence, awakening to the fact that you're in me and I am through you and I am everywhere and I am around you. That's my glory. That's my name. That's what it means. My name and my goodness. I, he says, show me your glory. In verse 19, he, God says, I'm gonna, I will cause my goodness to pass before you. The Lord replied, and I will proclaim my name. I'm going to let you know my frequency. You're going to understand my vibration. You're going to understand. Listen, right now I want you to close your eyes And I want you to see yourself. I want you to come up higher above your body and look down at your body and see your body. When you can see that, give me a little nod. Hmm. You're the observer. Okay? Now I want you to come back down into your body, into this frame, and I want you to feel the energy of spirit and breath within this frame. You can even begin to feel your blood flowing your heart beating. Just kind of move your fingers a little bit and be aware of the vibration. That's the name of God, the frequency, the essence of God. You are animated, literally animated by the breath of God. (laughs) You are a life-giving spirit. And it's spiral, it's joyful. It gives life to your body. It gives life to your mind. Your mind can go within you and drink from these lights right here, this spirit, this breath. Feel the chair holding up the essence of that presence. This is what consciousness is. You're aware of matter and energy, dense energy and energy. And it's all you. So Moses says, show me your glory. And and he said, my goodness is going to pass before you in my shim. (laughs) My very presence, my essence. Isaiah 43, 7. Everyone called by my shim, by my name, by my frequency, by what animates all the earth (laughs) is created for my glory. Everyone who is in my frequency, everyone that's being withheld in my frequency, that's part of the essence of my beingness, is created for my glory. 
whom I have indeed formed and made. He's, just, he's talking about the living soul and the life-giving spirit. He's talking about the image and the likeness. You are, we have served the image. We, you have, we have even our own self, we have served. When we just live out of our five senses, we're serving the image of who we are. But you are so much greater than an image. You are the image and the likeness. And that's what we're learning to do, to tap into the spirit, the heaven that's within us, which is the life-giving spirit. But it's you. It's not separate from you. It is you. But it's beyond just the five senses. And listen, it is in the letting go of the reality that we see or we feel where we begin to know God. Even today, I'm, I'm, I, I, the last few weeks, I could feel the presence of fear, and I just kind of sat with it. You know how we're learning to do it? You know, you're just observing it. You could feel it in your, I could feel it in my body. I could feel it in my mind, and I observed it. I didn't coddle it. I didn't really care where it came from. I'm not going on a witch hunt with that. If God wants to show me, awesome. But I'm knowing it's not me. It's the first step of disassociating with this dense energy that I don't want to stand in the concrete. I want to swim in the clear waters. And within me is a clear water. I have the revelation. You're not trying to get the revelation. It's already within you. It's in the letting go and the going limp. It's in the fully yieldedness that Jesus was made perfect in this world. Once made perfect became the eternal source of salvation. He already was perfect, we know that, but then he manifested perfection in, in the matter, in the dense energy. And then everywhere the dude went. <laughs> hmm. Isaiah 43, 7, everyone called by my name it was created for my glory, who I have formed and made. Holy, 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 Isaiah says, the earth is full of your glory, your weight. I see the picture when they change the sand. We'll, we'll, put, we'll put the clip in, the, in here, you guys, so people can watch it, like in a comment, because we'll get flagged if not. But the, the sand is changing. Your life is changing. We're changing forms, but it's all the same essence. That's why you can rejoice in all things. When you begin to rejoice in all things, you continually are aware of Christ in all things. And the form may not be forming what you want or what you think you want, but it's in the releasing of what you think you want or what you had to have and the entering back into that joy, that celebration that you begin to see again so clearly. You can start seeing your toes again. You start seeing the goodness. His glory is his goodness and his essence, his shim, his name in you. You are the expression of God. You are God in form. You are the form of his breath. And yes, he does want to show off his glory in our lives. Listen, God is a God of abundance, guys. He's a God of abundance. These trees that are producing fruit, the fruit will just fall off if no one's there to pick it. Right? There's no scarcity in God. The fruit will just go back into the ground and he'll start again. There's plenty for everyone. He's always been a God of abundance, and he wants to, us to enjoy abundance. But it's been our mindset, that part of us that we have to let go that, so that we can begin to move in it. And here's the deal. You don't put your value on the, the weight or the glory on just what you're seeing right now. There's so many people that are living their life in regret because they want to go back to yesteryears. That one Christmas when no one was fighting, you know what I mean? Like before my mom and dad got a divorce or back in high school, I could throw this football. Up this mountain. And then they can't see that the glory changed forms. It's just form. It's temporal anyway, but it's still glory. You know what I mean? And, and it's in when we hold on to what was, we can't enter into what is. Um, let's put up the, the Hebrew letters for me. So this is the word glory. This is I'm thinking about glory. And I know very little about this. I'm very, very excited to learn about this. But you guys know, um, I mean, I was introduced to this a long time ago. But I was like, ugh, sounds like a lot of work to me. But the letters in Hebrew, each letter is alive. It would be like you're in a, in a cave, an ancient, you know, we just moved, to, you know, um, to the natives and they're drawing it out and one letter means so much. So this is the word kavod in Hebrew. The first letter, let's see if I, the first letter is the kaf. 
I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but it's the, it, it represents the palm, an open hand to cover, to open, to allow, a wing, to bend, to tame. This is the word kabod. The second is bet. It's a tent, a house, a dwelling, inside, within, family, heart, temple, kingdom. And the last one is dalet or dalet. I'm not sure. Um, it's a door, an entrance, a pathway, a gate, an opening to the heart. What this word literally means is an open hand to the tent, which is a door. You're the tent. This part of us is the tent. Jesus became the door. We are now the door. When we are going within and we are living from the reality, when we're living from the breath of God, when we're living as life-giving spirits, we become the door. People are looking for God. They can't find him. They're looking for God in the cement, in the dense matter of their mind, the carnality. They're, that's why we form religions. Listen, a religion is formed like an idol. It's in the letting go of the form that you can begin to see your toes in the revelation of who you are and who God is. But I'm telling you, it's in the release. What does that mean to you? Like this week, what it meant is... Some of the fear I was feeling is in relationships going, and it would feel like it used to feel. Because we went through some stuff in the churches we've been in. And then I realized that I'm living, I'm allowing that feeling that's from the past. It's not even real now. I'm the one giving it breath. So I withhold that breath from it, and I only give joy breath. Or celebration. And I, as I am able to look at it in the clarity of spirit and see my toes wiggle, and I, it's not muddy anymore, I realize that this isn't even that. Yeah. It's called a trigger, guys. Your mom was abusive, and so your, your wife says one thing that hits that trigger. Or, you know, uh, women, you're, you had a, an absent dad, and so it, it, the guy is doing whatever, and it, that trigger. It's not real. It's real to you because you're giving life in it because you're a life-giving spirit. That's what glory is. You put value on it. It's okay that the trigger is there because that's our, our body has them. We're going to go through some of that stuff next week. But it's the whole thing is we get to decide if we give it life and make it our reality. When you make it your reality, that's what happened where the, the, the whole um, perception of separation came in. I look down, I can't see my feet. I must not have feet. So mankind began to live from the carnal mind and believe that God was separate from them. They believed each other was separate. And the wars started and the slavery started and the competition started and the loneliness started and all of the darkness came from the perception of density or separation. But in Shemaya, in the spirit, that word Shem, name, Shem, and Aya means everywhere throughout the cosmos. So the word for heaven is Shemaya. My essence, my being, my, my who I am, the presence of who I am is everywhere throughout the cosmos. That's the reality of God. That's what the word heaven means. See, the reason it's good if we start using a little bit different terms is because our mindsets have made heaven a far away. And so that's why I'm not trying to be all like, I'm probably saying things wrong. I'm like, oh gosh, some people are listening to me that know how to pronounce everything. And they're like, oh dear Lord. But I don't care. The point of it is, as I'm shifting in my mind. Because it's in the awareness, it's in the revelation, then you can begin to manifest it. So you can really see your toes. Your toes are really a part of you. There is only Spirit. There's only energy, even though there's dense energy. This is, this, they're, they're literally training kids. Um, Alex can tell you a little more about it. They're, really, they're training kids how to live outside of their five senses. So there could be things going on in this room, and the kid would begin to tell you what he can see that's going on in this, the next room. Kids just move right into it. We've been so convinced that this is our reality. And then we call everything supernatural, like it's without, outside of our reach. Even some of that was a scam. Making it outside of your reach. You are supernatural. You are, what do you think a life-giving spirit is? You've been duped. You've been, it's a sham, you guys. It's fraudulent. 
So it's interesting. And, and here's the other thing. You had intuition. You felt like something was God and you moved on it and then it didn't happen. And then you believed the lie and you made an idol out of that word that said it wasn't or you missed it or whatever that word was. <coughs> you gave life to that. Listen, you're not even in deception unless you give life to it. As soon as God shows you, you, you know, then it's just ch you choose it. My, Darren would be so irritating with the girls with, with that. Like, no, you're operating in deception. You've got to own it. Well, I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, you did. You gave life to it. You are powerful. We are not victims. We can, our toes are still on our feet. We can start wiggling around that cement and manipulate it until it becomes clear water. And we can get a revelation of our whole being. And we are the essence of God. <laughs> Whew. We are the essence of God. See, Adam, mankind, they didn't have to be. And some of them would receive, would move into levels of union and fellowship and come back. But he became the reflector like the moon reflects the sun. So if you're, the, if you're the moon reflecting the sun, there's a part of you, what part of you is dark? It's the part that turns away. So that's why we saw everything was good and bad. And they had to bring it down. That's good, that's bad. That's good, that's bad. Turn this way, turn this way. They had to write it down and keep God on there everywhere. God, 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 to try to keep their attention to the fact. Keep receiving, keep receiving, keep receiving. You don't even have to keep receiving. You just have to keep giving. To continually be aware of what's in you, you just keep turning that faucet on. I don't care if you just got really me messed up and you did something really wrong. If you get a word for somebody or if you need to pray for someone or if you need to step out and do something, I don't care if you failed 70 times yesterday. Once you do it, the flow begins because the revelation begins. That though you may look different, you, that's just matter. And matter is manipulated by, by pure energy. And you truly are pure energy. You are spirit. And you can change it. You can create. And you can recreate. And you can procreate. You can dust it off and build something else. It does not matter how many times you failed. It matters how you think. And what you give life to. <laughs> are y'all thinking? So... At the beginning of the week, I just was like, what if? Oh, my gosh, what if? This is just like a virtual simulation for your growth. <laughs> I kind of think it is. I kind of think we're just here to grow and mature. And what an opportunity. What an opportunity, Danny. What the heck? Like, let's grow and mature, man. Virtual is an existing or resulting in essence or effect, though not actual in fact, form, or name. It's existing in the mind. It's the product of the imagination. So these guys, the first Adam began to perceive that God was far away, perceive that God wanted to offer them to offer their firstborn, and he had to correct him, perceive that God wanted sacrifice. God didn't want that. That was their mindsets were so dark. They began to give God what they thought he perceived and built, they built a whole system around it. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a, a, a virtual existing or resulting in the essence or effect, though not actual in fact. They were not living by the breath, by the, 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 the presence, by the, the spirit of God which is what we were intended to do. God wasn't wiping them out. It was a level of maturity. They're going to learn. They're going to get it. And they would get a touch. Why in the heck are we still living like that? Oh, we want a touch here and a touch there and a touch here. When it's the flow of God that's within us, like we are life-giving spirits. We've been lied to. We've lied to ourselves. We've settled for less. So then when the second Adam comes, which is Christ... We, mankind, so the first mankind, remember Darren would say there's only two mankind, there's only two men, first mankind and the last. And this is what's so cool, when, when Christ came, he lives outside of time, so he went all the way back to the first man, brought him into himself. He didn't mess around. He wasn't just doing it from this, sorry about you. 
He, went, he got all mankind and he placed them in himself. And he, be, he became God Almighty, the Allah Allah. became The spirit became flesh. And in him we were. And now God was getting his image. We were maturing. Mankind was maturing and his likeness. Likeness mean, meaning the fellowship of union. The other word for virtual is it's existing in the mind, a product of the imagination. So from our imagination, we believe lies. So God was just having me. It wasn't even a matter of releasing or forgiving people. Listen, there'll be a place that you'll you grow into that you just continue, like you come in and out for a while, and then you're like, oh, this feels really good. I'm going to live in it because this is my reality. That, what's there to forgive? There's only God. He said the sins, the error of man was taken care of before he created the earth. <laughs> That's the reality that we're to live in. It's okay if we're not there yet. But if I say, Teresa sinned against me, yet I release her. It's like I'm free and I'm going to release her who's not free. But if, we, if I can come up to a higher reality that I'm in Christ, she's never sinned against me. Because the reality, not the virtual reality, but the reality of the truth is there is no sin in him. Why do you think he came as a sinless man? In him there is no sin. Is all mankind in him? Think about it, guys. Not with your mind, but is all mankind in him? When he said, woman, where are your accusers? He's trying to get her to see that there's another reality. I'm pulling you into another reality. All mankind, you're coming up into a reality where there are no accusers. You have no adversary. The devil's on your side. He's a toothless dog. He's getting you right where you need to be. He's a messenger from me. That's scripture. That's scripture. He sent a messenger of Satan, right? Look it up. That's a reality you begin to live in, and then you're just like, and y'all, I'll be honest, I I started really, really moving into this um, about a year before Darren transitioned, and I was been doing really well. This last, as as we've been making some changes here in the church, I've come out of it, and all I could tell in it is I was feeling fear and anxiety. I could feel it in my body. And then I would become aware, I'm observing it, which is great, but there's been spaces in my life where I don't even know it's there, because it's not there. I'm already in a different reality. Do you know what I'm saying? And um, that's what was so fun when I went to Ireland, because I was sitting when I was, uh, you know, I felt fear, I wanted to feel fear. It's kind of like a little roller coaster ride. I want to travel all by myself. I mean, I was 17 when I married, like, Darren knows where you are at all times. He was like a witch doctor or something. I don't know what he was. I mean, I mean, thank God, you know what I mean? But all of a sudden, I'm in Ireland. No one knows where I am. And I'm like, oh, what can I do? That's a little crazy, you know? Um, and just sitting there with myself and, and then discerning which part is my natural self feeling fearful. And is God really giving me a warning? You know what I mean? Because all I know is when, when Yeshua was on the earth and they were going to throw him off the cliff, it says he moved through the crowd. It didn't, it didn't say that he got fearful, that, that he was like, no, it's a warning from God. we got to run this way. Or he just moved through the crowd, you know. So when you're in the, the real reality, you can just kind of smoothly loop, move through life. It even says in Corinthians that when you're in love, when you're in agape, when you're living in the nature, the truth of who you are, you don't even know when you're done wrong. So who is there to forgive, man? I'm in a whole different reality. Like, right? The word simulate means an imitation, a sham, a counterfeit. You know, we're hearing all these words like, listen, guys, it's an illusion. And you get so mad. What do you mean it's an illusion? <laughs> what do you mean? I feel it. I see it. It's hurting me. Right? And we get so upset about it. But a simulation is an imitation, a sham, a counterfeit. It's the use of 3D objects in environments to create, immerse, and engage in a learning experience. <laughs> so a virtual simulation is something you see, feel, hear, taste, and touch. It's something you're aware of in this matter, in this form. You may hate it. You may love it. Okay? But it's in the 3D form. What were they operating in when they're burning them at the stake? What were these mystics operating in when they cut their head off and they're holding their own heads and their heads are still singing glory? (sighs) 
They were beyond matter in 3D. They got a hold of something. And we're getting drinks of it. And we're going to learn to swim in it. We're going to see our toes and wiggle our toes. And people will say, that's cement. And we're like, no, I see my whole being. Because I'm fluid. It's not just about manifesting that one thing that then you see it. But that's just the fun of it. What can we do? So, and then the other word I was just thinking about was algorithm. You guys know what an algorithm is? We're familiar now because of computers, I think. Probably some of you math heads were familiar way before that. But an algorithm on a computer, or it's a, a set of well-defined steps or rules that you need to follow to obtain a predetermined result. So I sent somebody, they asked me what Darren was diagnosed with, and I typed in meso... And I usually, mesothelioma comes up because I've typed it in my phone. It's an algorithm now. But instead, I've also typed mesopotamia in my phone. And so I didn't even know it, but I told him it was mesopotamia. <laughs> he didn't tell me till much later, which is very amazing, because in 1999, God told Darren to go to mesopotamia. I'm here now. I'm just now here. And we'll, we're going to discover what that means. It's beautiful. It's the history. It's our history, you guys, that got jacked up when Rome got involved. Rome and the Greeks. And it's how the Western church began to be formed and the hierarchy and the rules and where we started getting really jacked up. And in Mesopotamia is where all these cultures, you're going to love it. You're going to love the history of it. We're going to go through some of it. It's going to make you really mad it's going to make you really mad. Hopefully you guys have already been awakened to the fact that with our country and like how much we really know about this simulation, <laughs> virtual simulation. It really is. Now it's getting very clear, isn't it? But it was hard for me to learn that it was always there. I mean, I read all the books about George W. was my buddy just because he had poop on his shoes and he was a multimillionaire, you know what I mean? Like he was a rancher from Texas and I loved George W. And I read all the books and then I saw how things played out with Trump and all these guys that were like in it and then more things unfolded and then you're like, I know nothing. Yeah. It's all a simulation. So what am I here to do? Manipulate this simulation. <laughs> I guess I'll do this. This is the last thing. This is just a retouch. Last week we talked about desire, which the seat of desire is your heart. It's the core of your being. The center of who, who you are is the seat of desire. When it says heart in scripture, that's what it is. The seat of emotion, the seat of desire. So we're talking about being intentional with our desire. Okay? That's the engine on the inside of us. That's the engine. So... When I'm intentional, from when I'm speaking or I'm trying to communicate, we can write out letters, you know, sentences, paragraphs, stories, expressions, whatever, okay? And I know that word doesn't say intentional. You get right up on it. You just start writing crazy. <laughs> Languages in intentional. I don't know. Um, anyway, <laughs> the core of who you are is how you, you drive this whole thing. And so you, and, and, and you begin to see it by where you're putting your glory, your weight, your value. And it's okay if you've put it on the simulation that's going to be blown away pretty soon. It's okay. We just pull it back. That's the power you have to pull back and begin to place value on the reality that's real. So these, even letters and sentences and stories, and this is how we've connected with religions. If your doctrine is right, if your belief system is right, if you cross your I's and dot your T's, those are all graven, Im they're graven images. The breath comes behind it or comes through it. So we are learning how to know people by their intentional, whatever that word is, desires, by their intention. We had to see that it was fake. Listen, the codependency in some of your relationships, and you relied so much on that pastor, that mom, that coach, that dad, whoever it was, you had to be let down. It was for your good. It was for your good. 
It was so you could redirect your desire. It was so that you could take the weight that you put on that person that you thought would never hurt. People are so hurt in the church because they put a weight like, this is going to be where my healing is. And I get that, okay? But the whole thing, then once you can begin to see the reality that's real, you realize that there's people that are manipulated and, but by a darkened mind. They don't even know. He, he wasn't p- making a play on words when he said they don't know what they're doing. I release them. <sighs> He's like, they don't even know what's real. I release them. We get to move into that place and, and understand that place by revelation. All right, we're going to watch one more video. This won't be on the um, thing. We can, we'll put it in the um, content or whatever, the comments. This, is it, do I have any other videos or pictures I was going to show? Okay. So we're going to show the video of the sound. Um, this is just interesting. You'll like it, maybe. I don't know you. Um, but sound, we're going to look, continually learn about more about sound when he spoke and it was. Okay? Sound comes from intention. I, I told the band, which we're going to start spending some time together on some of this. But it's the heart-mind connection. When you release a sound, that, that begins to change atmosphere, change matter. It's the connection of the whole being, the complete authenticity of who you are. Okay? We have lived a life disconnected. So we spoke from a carnal thoughts, and intellectual people might just think it's so great. But it's not life-changing. And God is teaching us how to connect both in communicating out of our life-giving spirit, which is sound. Okay? It has a sound. It's utterance. So, no, we thought we'd watch this last clip, and then we'll, we'll finish up. Go for it. Oh, yeah. Oh, and then we're taking an offering. Don't you guys leave. I see you. Just kidding. <laughs> you can turn my mic off. This is kind of...
So I'm going to read this again. You can go ahead and kill me off of the air. Turn me off the air. Um, this is why, uh, and I love it. I, when I heard this, I'm like,